All right, so moving on to the final segment, I will be sharing my thoughts on the class of the 2023 NBA class, the NBA class that it was inducted into the NBA Hall of Fame. So this 2023 NBA class was inducted into the Hall of Fame this past uh, weekend. And this NBA draft class, uh, NBA Hall of Fame class is stacked from top to bottom. I'm glad I got to watch all these legends and coaches during my time growing up being an NBA fan, falling in love with the game of basketball. I'm glad I got to watch all these icons leave their impact, leave their mark on the game of basketball. And I'm forever grateful that I got to watch these legends while growing up, uh, kid, w falling in love with the game of basketball. So going on with the first guy that I will mention that was inducted into the NBA Hall of Fame is my guy, Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade is one of my favorite players of all time. Dwayne Wade is actually one of the reasons why I became a Miami Heat fan. I fell in love with him, the duo of him, Shaquille O'Neal, in the 2006 days. Man, the, the way I, Dwayne Wade dominated the 2006 NBA Finals really made me convinced to become a Miami Heat fan. Uh, only doing it at 23 years of age, putting a franchise on your back like that. Vintage D-Wade was nasty. I do believe that he is the greatest uh, player in Miami Heat history. You know, it, I understand LeBron's been there. Chris Bosh, Jimmy Butler, you name it. Dwayne Wade is the best player to ever put on a Miami Heat jersey. And I say that with all due respect. But Dwayne Wade was just, he just had that, that love for the game of basketball. He was a part of that stack 2022 NBA draft with his guys, with his buddies, LeBron James, Carmelo Anthony, Chris Bosh. He was one of the, in my opinion, the second best player to come from that, uh, one of the, or excuse me, 2003, 2003 NBA draft class, not 2002, 03. But nonetheless, he was the second best player to come from that draft class. And once he got drafted to the NBA, he made uh, a career a lot of career-defining moments to solidify himself uh, to, uh, as one of the greatest shooting guards of all time. The second, the third best shooting guard behind Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan, in my opinion. But Dwayne Wade went on to win three NBA titles, uh, went on to win the 2006 uh, NBA Finals MVP award. He was a 13-time NBA All-Star, a two-time All-NBA First Team. Like I said, he he left his game on the he left his game uh, he left it all on the court. Uh, the big reason why he's been inducted with the all-time grace in the NBA Hall of Fame. Again, third best shooting guard of all time behind Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan. Dwayne Wade is definitely deserving of his position, of his spot in the NBA Hall of Fame. And then, next guy, Dirk Nowinski. Dirk Nowinski is one of the best foreign players of all time. Definitely one of the greatest power forwards of all time as well. He was a true icon to the game of basketball. Uh, what Dirk Nowinski did for the Dallas Mavericks in his 21 career, uh, in his 21 years in the NBA, staying loyal with the franchise, staying loyal to the city of Dallas was really special, truly remarkable. You won't see anybody stay with a team nowadays for 21 years. Hell, he even finished their career with a, the same franchise that drafted him, the way how these trades are going. But Dirk Nowitzki was one of a kind. He was very loyal, very passionate for game of the basketball. And he just dominated all from the start all the way to the end of his career. And he, as Miami Heat fans going to pay me, but I got to give Dirk Nowitzki his respect. What he did for the Dallas Mavericks in the 2011 NBA playoffs, I think that went on as one of the greatest playoff runs in NBA history, the way how they went in. Uh, dominated and even dethroned the big three, the Miami Heat closing him out in game six and winning the NBA title in South Beach in Miami. Dirk Nowitzki will truly will ever be remembered like that for the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, might make me toss a turn in my sleep every now and then, but Dirk Nowitzki was one of the, a, a true icon to the game of basketball. Like I said, stay loyal 21 years to the Dallas Mavericks, 14-time uh, All-Star, uh, former MVP, former NBA champion, former finals MVP, currently sixth all-time in NBA scoring history. Dirk Nowitzki will ever be for member for one of the, being one of the greatest power forwards in the game of basketball. He's definitely deserving of a spot in the NBA Hall of Fame. Happy for the guy as well. Next player, Pa Gasol. Now, Pa Gasol 
will forever be known as Kobe Bryant's wingman, helping him win two championships in LA, helping Kobe Bryant win two out of five of his NBA championships. Now, let me say this. When they went on to win championships uh, in 09, defeating the, the Orlando Magic, Dwight Howard and company, and in 2010, beat, finally beating the Boston Celtics in a rematch from 08 to win those titles, that never happens if Pau Gasol is never Kobe Bryant's wingman. And I'm the first to say it. That was his tag team partner in L.A. Without Pau Gasol, you remove him from that roster. I'm not sure if Kobe Bryant wins two more championships in his respective career. I say that with all due respect. That's how important Pau Gasol was to the Lakers. That's how important Pau Gasol was to Kobe Bryant. And the love that I saw from the, stare, from the ceremony from Pau Gasol's speech he was speaking from the heart. He was selling. He was telling everybody how much that Kobe believed in him in his game. He would not be where he was today without Kobe Bryant. I love that. I, I, I love that the fact that he cherishes those moments with the late great Kobe Bryant. But nonetheless, Pau Gasol is very deserving of a spot in the NBA Hall of Fame as well. Six-time All-Star, two-time NBA champion, former Rookie of the Year, one of the most accomplished foreign players in NBA history, Pau Gasol definitely is deserving of a spot in the NBA Hall of Fame. Then you have Tony Parker. Tony Parker was one of the craftiest point guards that I ever grew up watching. And when I think about it, you really can't compare what Tony Parker brings to the table that anybody, any legend, any significant player in the NBA today at the point guard position, uh, maybe Rajon Rondo, maybe, but Rondo was more of a passer uh, but Tony Parker, man, brought it all, and he wasn't a flashy shooter that we see in the NBA today, the point guard position, and Steph Curry, I say that respectfully, Damian Lillard, Trey Young, those guys can shoot, but Tony Parker wasn't that. He wasn't a playmaking slasher that took his game to the paint like uh, prime Derrick Rose and an athletic Russell Westbrook. Tony Parker was his own guy, and he was a very crafty point guard. What he brought to the table meant a lot to the San Antonio Spurs because he was the glue, final glue piece to that big three playing alongside Tim Duncan and Manu Ginobili, building one of the best franchise, but uh, one of the best dynasties in NBA history in uh, in his time with the San Antonio Spurs. Uh, he was very smart, very smart point guard. Put the team first as well. Uh, did everything to help his team win on both sides of the court, whether that's scoring when his number is called getting his teammates involved with assists. He was a pesky guy on the defensive end, creating a lot of steals. I think he finished his, was it, uh, finished his career with over 1,000 steals. So Tony Parker brought it all. And that's what a gritty, crafty point guard, uh, gritty, crafty point guard in Tony Parker, what he brought to the game. That's what he had during his NBA career. Uh, Tony Parker was a four-time NBA champion, former NBA Finals MVP of the 2007 NBA Finals, a uh, six-time All-Star. He really wasn't something that you could really uh, you imagine to be a Hall of Famer, but Tony Parker with grit, determination, teamwork, team player first, he put together a magnificent career, and that's why he's earned a spot in the NBA Hall of Fame as well. Those are all the players, but final guy. Greg Popovich. Uh, Greg Popovich is that guy that you, in my opinion, you think of the NBA. I think when you think of coaches outside of the NBA, when you think about the NFL and great coaches of a Bill Belichick, when you think of the collegiate level of football and head coaches and Nick Saban, when you think of the collegiate level of basketball and Coach K well, at his time with Duke, those guys really all remind me of Greg Popovich in different worlds. That's how special of a coach that Greg Popovich was. He found a way to adapt to the NBA, found a way to win, didn't really do it, getting key free agents. He really built his own guys up like a Bill Belichick did, like Nick Sabian did, built Alabama from the ground up, like Coach K built Duke up from the ground up, Bill Belichick doing the same thing for the New England Patriots, building from the ground up. That's what Bill Bell, uh, excuse me, that's what Greg Popovich did with the San Antonio Spurs. He helped develop Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, Manu Ginobili, David Robinson, Kawhi Leonard. All those players he molded into caliber superstar players that weren't meant to be superstar players. Yes, you could have the argument for Tim Duncan and David Robinson being former first round picks, uh, first overall picks. 
but they weren't supposed to translate into what they became. Same with Tony Parker. Like I just said, he's a weird point guard when you really think about it, but craftiness, determination, being a team player is what he's installed in all those guys. Mono Ginobili putting the team first, coming off the bench, being a key six man for the uh, ma uh, majority of his NBA career. Kawhi Leonard learning from those guys to potentially be his own superstar, his own big name in the NBA. That's what Greg Popovich installed in his time with the, uh, the San Antonio Spurs. Uh, there is actually a true strong argument, in my opinion, that Greg Popovich is the uh, greatest coach of all time. I actually put the poll out for you guys today. I asked you guys, who's the greatest coach of all time in the NBA? Greg Popovich or Phil Jackson? And I do want to say 79% of you guys did say that Greg Popovich, Greg Popovich was the best coach in NBA history. But there is a strong argument for that because not only you guys matter, the fans matter, but my argument is that Phil Jackson, when you compare Greg Popovich and, and, Greg, and Phil Jackson, Phil Jackson has 11 championships. I get that. And he's gone on three separate three-peats with two respective franchises with the Chicago Bulls and Los Angeles Lakers. But he's won a total of 11 championships. How many championships... Does he win if he doesn't have a superstar like Michael Jordan? If he isn't handpicked, uh, if it's not hand, again given with the Michael Jordan, uh, Dennis, Ro uh, Dennis Rodman, uh, Scottie Pimpin. What if he's not handed with a Kobe Bryant or Shaquille O'Neal? Would he really have 11 rings? Y'all tell me. But when you, expect, you compare the coaching job that Phil Jackson did to what Greg Popovich did and those names that I just mentioned... They're not supposed to be, they were not supposed to be where they are. Greg Popovich built it up from the ground up and won his five respective championships, building brick by brick, building superstar by superstar. And that is the reason why I do believe that Greg Popovich is the greatest coach of all time in the NBA. And his resume says it all. He doesn't have the rings that Phil Jackson has, but he's a five-time NBA champion building brick by brick by brick with the talented players that he's had he never even had to get out and get a free nba free agent he built he built and molded those guys from the ground up five-time nba champion has the highest winning percentage amongst all coaches in nba history three-time nba coach of the year he has a total of 284 playoff wins five and one in the nba playoffs and went on to win a gold medal coaching the 2020 olympic team team usa so all of those players and Greg Popovich being the only coach inducted, they are all deserving to be in the NBA Hall of Fame. I think the 2023 class of the NBA Hall of Fame was very is very special. I'm glad I got to watch all these icons share their game of basketball to the world. I'm glad I got to grow up watching these icons, these legends leave their mark on the game of basketball. I'm forever grateful for them. And they all deserve a spot in the NBA Hall of Fame with the all-time greats. But that is all the time I have for you guys today. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening. This is your host, Thomas Tyree, signing off. And I'll see you guys on next week's episode.